Hey, um, this is the SAT 190 uh, summary of chapter four, um, the first video. So um, what we're going to be talking about here is um, how we explain the relationship between two variables. In chapter three, we talked about one variable, and we're going to do this in two different ways, um, both of them involving linear relationships. Now, that's not to say that linear relationships are the only ones, they're the only ones that matter but they're the only ones we're gonna study in this course. Um, the other ones take a little bit more um, math. So the two things we're gonna do are correlation, which measures how strong your relationship two variables have, and then least squares regression, which is how we find that line of best fit that's gonna help us predict what uh, the relationship between the two variables is. Um, as uh, before, I have totally cribbed these slides from Shan Shan Love, who's another faculty member in our department, so thanks to her for that. Um, and let's get started with the first section. So um, again, we're gonna talk about how two numeric variables relate to each other. Now, back in chapter one, we talked about um, the two variables that there are. There's the response variable, which we sometimes call the output variable or the dependent variable. That's the y-axis usually on our chart. <clears throat> and the explanatory variable, which is the one that we're gonna plug in uh, to try to make the prediction. And that's usually X and that goes on the X axis. Um, so um, typically that's what we're gonna have and we're gonna focus on numeric ones here. Later on in the semester, we're gonna come back and talk about what we can do with categorical variables. Um, and again, it's a cool thing, but we can only do one thing at a time. So if the two variables tend to move together, when one goes up, the other one goes up. When one goes down, the other one goes down we say that those variables have a relationship. Now, often scatter plots are gonna be a good way to look at that. So um, here's just a real simple example, um, two, four, six, eight points. And it's just a measurement comparing how fast a golf club was moving when it hit the ball and how far the ball went when it was hit. Okay, so we have an X column and a Y column. You could write that as an ordered pair, like it is there in the third column, but typically in a spreadsheet or in StatCrunch or whatever, we wouldn't do our data like that. So, um, all right, there's a picture of what that looks like. Um, so if we plot that on the two axes, um, we can just put the dots on there. And I know the numbers are little, but it doesn't actually matter what they are. They're just the ones that go there. And um, it doesn't take any math at all to look at that and say, gosh, as the club head speed increases, that's the X axis, it looks like the ball goes farther, right? And again, this isn't the most uh, breathtaking result you've ever seen, but you hit the ball hard and it goes far. Um, but it's pretty easy to see when you look at that data that that relationship is true. Now we're gonna use some terms to talk about this. We use positive association to refer to the idea that when one goes up, the other one goes up, which is what we have here. We could also have negative association of data. Um, for instance, um, Often when you think about the price going up, the number of things you sell goes down um, as a result of that. That's what economists like to talk about. And we'll also talk about the shape of that relationship. And again, a linear relationship is often the one that we're going to talk about. So um, the idea of how much it looks like a line. Now you can see that the data, the little black dots, aren't a perfect line, but you know, they're better than nothing at all. So um, we're going to call those kind of linear. And this idea of correlation that we're gonna talk about today really looks at how strong that linear relationship is. Another way to say that is, is a line a good way to approximate that relationship? So um, we talk about the strength of a relationship. And again, I know these aren't too easy to see, but the idea that a strong positive relationship will look uh, pretty tight, a weak positive relationship will be still going uphill. You can still see it, but it won't be as strong. There could be no correlation at all where the dots just kind of dance around randomly and a strong negative reaction uh, relationship. And so a strong negative relationship is again, where they would be tight going down. So you have strong or weak, positive or negative. Okay, so we could see that there was a strong relationship, but is there a way that we can assign a number to it to measure how good a relationship that is? How linear is it? We call this number the correlation coefficient. And here's the formula for it. And just like the formula for standard deviation, it's tedious, it's annoying, but it's not really hard to calculate. So here we're gonna have both X and Y variables. And again, we're gonna do the same thing in both cases. Notice that we know all of those things. There's an X, that's the data points. We have X bar, that's the mean. 
we have SX, which is the standard deviation. Then for Y, we have the same thing. YI, which is just the point, Y bar, which is the mean, and SY, which is the standard deviation. So we're gonna calculate those two numbers. Remember, those are the Z-score. Um, and we're gonna have N minus one, which is what we divide by as we calculate that. And again, for the same reason, we have N minus one. There's no square root here because we're just combining the differences. One interesting thing is because these z-scores divide by the unit, so the top is a unit, the bottom is the same unit, it cancels. We don't have any units at all, so R is what we call a unitless measure because it's another one of those things we can compare just like, uh, um, well, z-score, I guess, right? Because that's what we talked about before. All right, so that calculation is always gonna be between minus one and plus one, that is, R is between negative one and positive one inclusive. If it's exactly one or exactly minus one, that's a perfect linear relationship. That's normally a sign you did something wrong because real data never does that. The direction, whether it's a plus or a minus, indicates the direction. So a positive relationship has a plus, a negative relationship has a minus, and it kind of goes the way you think it does. A positive relationship has a positive number. In general, um, the closer the number is to one, the stronger the relationship is, the closer it is to zero, the weaker it is. So again, that's plus one or negative one. Okay, and some fields uh, assign numbers, like if it's less than 0.5, it's weak. In other areas, it's 0.3 is weak, but closer to 0.1 is more strong. Um, so um, what's nice about R is it works the same. If you use the weights in pounds or the weights in kilograms, the height in inches, the heights in centimeters, because it all cancels out, the z-scores will be the same. And of course, doesn't change. You don't count people, metric. I don't know what that means. Um, but um, you don't do any calculations differently as you do that. Okay, so here's what we do when we calculate it. I'm gonna do an example here in a second, but we make sure we calculate x bar, s, y bar, and s uh, for the y. We calculate the z-scores for each observation. Then we multiply them together. Then we just calculate through the rest of the formula. Okay, so here in the second video, we're gonna go through uh, that example and then we'll um, get back to um, doing it here in the second video.